Hi, Randy, K7AGE, back again to work on antennas. I'm now going to build my 40 and 80 meter dipoles to go up on my tower. You know, I talked about doing this a long time ago, and I'm finally going to get around to doing it. So that's what this video is about. So a dipole is about the simplest antenna that you can build. It's a piece of wire that's about a half wavelength long. You cut it in half, and in the center is where your coax gets attached. I like to use a ballon because what this does is make sure the currents are equal in both wires and it helps reduce any RF coming back down on the coax coming back into the shack. A couple other things you need is some end, um, insulators and then some rope or line to tie it up. Okay, so one of the first things we have to do is calculate the length of the wire. How long is it going to be? Well, before you can do that, you need to think about what frequencies you want to operate on. So we're going to start with the 80 meter dipole because uh, that is the longest and it's also the widest bandwidth of the two. It's 500 kilohertz or half a megahertz uh, for the 40 meter and uh, 300 kilohertz or, or 0.3 megahertz for the 40 meter. And what this means is that on 80 meters, it's really hard to make the antenna work across the whole band. It's a wide band. So you can either pick your favorite spot or kind of look at the low end where you might want to operate and the high end and pick a spot in the middle, which is what I'm going to do. So where in the band do I like to operate? Well, I like to do a lot of FT8. So on the 80 meter band, that's at 3.573 megahertz. But then the Oregon emergency nets are all up above 3.95. They're at the very top of the band. So here I want to go from way low to way high. So that's about a 377 kilohertz spread that I would like to operate. So the mid frequency between the 3.573 and the 3.95 is around 3.762 megahertz. Now we've all been told, and it's in all the books, to figure out the length of the wire, take the number 460 and divide it by the frequency in megahertz, and it'll give you the length in feet. And since the majority of my viewers are all in the United States, that's used to feet, we're not gonna deal with meters here, so, um, we can convert from feet, feet to meters if you're over in a country or a place that uses the metric system. So, a question that's been on some of my other videos is where does this number 468 come from? So we have this number, this magic number 468. Where did that come from? Well, Ward Silver, N0AX, back in... Um, 2010, I believe, wrote an article for eham.net, and it was titled, uh, Where Does 468 Come From? So I went looking for this the other day, preparing for this video, and it's not there anymore. It's so old, it has expired. So I contacted Ward. He sent me a copy of the paper. It's two pages long. I'm not going to read it all here. And... We're working at trying to get that reinstated back on eham. So as of right now, when I'm recording this, it's not there. And when it comes back, if it comes back, I will put a, a link in the uh, show notes below. It'll take you there. Otherwise, you can just go to eham, uh, go to forums, and search for 468 and see if it shows up uh, active instead of expired. So I'm just going to kind of briefly tell you the highlights here of Ward's uh, hunt to find where 468 came from. So Ward was visiting the ARR headquarters and went to the library on his hunt for 468. So the first thing he did was went back to edition one of the antenna handbook dated 1939 and opened it up and did some looking around and the 468 formula appears and as, it, as a reduction, it said, from 492. So here's another magic number, and that was it. Nothing there to justify or hint at where that came from. So he did some more hunting around, 
And he found uh, some articles about early experiments in 1925 and 1926 on 40 meters. And um, he basically uh, did some experiments uh, with wire, he says, probably with number eight or number 14, installed in a backyard heights of 20 to 40 feet. That sounds familiar for most of us. Um, for these antennas of an eighth to a quarter wave wavelength above ground, a value of 468 seemed to be about right. And that's what was in the 1929 handbook. Still, <laughs> where does it come from? So in 2009, Ward published an article in QST in the November 2009 in the hands-on radio column. And what he did was model a 20 meter dipole made of number 12 wire, uninsulated, at heights from 1 8 to two wavelengths over a realistic ground and calculated the correction factor for each height. It varied from 466 to 481. And he says clearly using 468 would lead to an antenna being too short most of the time. So these magic numbers have been determined over various circumstances over, over time. And they've ranged anything from the 468 up to 490 and 492. Um, they will only give you an approximate answer for your situation. So as Ward writes, another lesson to learn from this exploration is to realize that magic numbers and formulas have of, often been determined through experimentation under specific circumstances. As such, they likely depend on a variety of factors that you may not be able to replicate. They will only approximate what you will actually encounter. If the assumption behind these values are given, you can use the information by comparing it to your situation. If the assumptions are not known, you should allow for variances and try and find a more accurate model representative of your own circumstances. What are you going to do? I'm going to use 490. That makes the wire longer. You can always shorten it up. It's harder out there when you're working on the antenna to make it longer. I hope that kind of helped. <laughs> Oops, stop everything for a second. I have a little insert here I want to add to the video, which I shot a little while ago, and I'm getting around to finishing it up here. But I was talking to my friend George, KJ6VU from the Ham Radio Workbench, about where did the 468 come from? And he says, well, it's from here. So George says, multiply the speed of light, which is 186,000 miles per second by 5,280 feet to convert to feet per second, which ends up equaling 984 million feet per second. He then says, divide the 984 million feet per second by 1 million to give you 984 feet for one wavelength calculation in megahertz. Then divide the 984 by 2 to, to come up with 492 for a half wavelength in megahertz. And then to finish this off, he says, multiply the 492 by 0.9512, which is the velocity of, of propagation or the end effect of copper. So this is, um, the signal doesn't go down the copper wire at the speed of light. It's a little bit slower, about 5% slower. And you end up with 468 and Bob's your uncle. So thanks, George, for, for, for clearing that up. That sounds very logical and simple. I'm sorry it's all in uh, feet and miles for all of our my international viewers. Sorry, I don't have the metric equivalents of all that. It shouldn't be hard for you to figure out. Anyway, I'll now return you to the previously scheduled video. So, what length am I going to use? <laughs> okay, so my target frequency for the 80 meter dipole is 3.762 megahertz. Overall length will be 130.2 feet or 65.1 feet of wire for each half of the antenna. For 40 meters, I'm just going to pick the middle of the band. So the band runs in the U.S. or in our region uh, from, from 7.0 to 7.3. I guess over in Europe and places, the 
it goes from 7 to 7.2. So we have a little bit more. So the middle of the band is 7.15. That makes the overall length of 68.5 feet or 34.2 feet for each half. So let's look at the components I'm going to use to build the dipole. Kind of the key point, key piece is the ballon that's going to go in the center. This is a DX Engineering. They sell a whole series of these for different, depending on your use. This is a MaxiCore 20. That's kind of the uh, family name. And it's the DXE uh, MC20-1-1. So this one is for a balanced antenna. The wires will come off the top with coax feet. Uh, it's a dual core, and this is rated for 5 kilowatts sideband and, and CW. So I shouldn't be smoking this when I'm running the amplifier <laughs> with 500 watts of FT8. So um, you kind of buy something larger than, than what you uh, think you're going to need. Um, it's not cheap. It's $125. Um, you could probably wind your own if you're good, but that's what's going to go in the center. So in my installation, I'm going to hang the ballon off the top of the tower with a rope and I have a cross arm out there and a pulley that was in the previous video from months ago. But this doesn't really have anything on the top to kind of tie it up. Um, so I bought this gizmo. Uh, and this is a mounting plate for the ballon. And basically, this will screw and attach on there like that. And um, now I've got a place here for the line to attach. The wire will come in and serpentine through these three slots, and that'll, that'll grab it and it won't pull out. And that gives it um, some strain relief when it connects to the thumb screws that's on the top. Uh, excuse me, and then we got the coax connector on the bottom, and there's a little stub here to help um, take some relief off the coax. So that's the ballon and the thing that's going to hold it up at the top of the tower. So with that bracket is two of these guys, and these are the insulators for the end of the wire. And again, the wire will just work its way through those slots and back to allow you to uh, make adjustments and stuff and your, tie, your rope to tie it up. And these are actually has a little uh, um, chamfered um, area on the inside here, it's hard to see, to allow the wire to go in and wrap around. So it has two of these. And there's the instruction sheet for that. So there's kind of what it's all going to look like when it's all up together. Guidelines here are building the dipole. And uh, they use 468 as the magic number. And you need wire. <laughs> so I bought a 500 foot spool. This is number 14 gauge copper, it's stranded, so it's individual wires in there um, to give it flexibility and it's fairly flexible, it's not stiff, it's not copper weld, it's not solid. This will this will bend and hopefully uh, keep it from breaking. <laughs> so I got 500 feet here, so I got a lot, a lot of wire to play with. So I'm not going to show you the whole process of building all this. It's uh, you know, what I'll do is I'll go outside, put a couple stakes in the ground, measure out the lengths of the wires and cut it. I'll probably uh, wrap it up into coils, bring it in here, uh, attach it to the um, ballon and uh, mount the bracket on the ballon and stuff like that. So um, that's what I'm going to finish up with here. I'll let you look over my shoulder a little bit on that, but I'm not going to go through a step by step. I have a couple other videos of how to do all that, but it's, it's just basically mechanical work at that point. My next video, after I get these things hung up and spread out, will be to tune them. We'll see how, how that magic number actually played out. Did it put the resonant or the lowest SWR, which may or may not be the same frequency, where I had planned it. So again, everything affects it the height, the angle, other things that are in proximity uh, and with the antennas um, will all affect the tuning of it. So that's all for now. I'll let you look over my shoulder a little bit. This is Randy. See you later.
Thanks for watching. Oh, hit that like button. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. So thank you.